Okay, so now we are looking at uh, capital budgeting, which is also called the investment appraisal technique. That is uh, one of the cardinal topics in corporate finance, the company finance, looking at the financing method. So we are looking at the investment appraisal technique or the project evaluation technique. So in the other class, we ended on, um, on the internal rate of return for those who attended the afternoon class. Now this time around, okay, we are just building up a little bit, getting down to the other uh, technique. Of course, there are five of them, like I mentioned the year earlier, that there are five techniques that are used in capital budgeting. We are, we are looking at the net present value, the payback period, the internal rate of retain, the accounting rate of retain, and the profitability index. So we have one, uh, we have two here, that is the payback. We have number three, which is the internal rate of retain. Then you're getting down to number four, we have the accounting rate of retain. And then number five, we have the profitability uh, index. All right. So for the criteria that are used here, for this one, acceptance with NPV greater than zero for those who attended the class, I explained that in the afternoon, but we will still get there for those who missed it, there's no problem. So accept the project with a shorter payback period so that you recover your money uh, faster. Then accept the project when internal rate of return is act actually greater than the cost of capital. Okay, so these are the criteria we used for project acceptance. Um, we are doing this topic because you need to look at the project viability as an investor. You want to invest in a project. Is it worthwhile for you to make an investment in a project? Or are you going to lose your money? Okay, so all these. So the first one is NPV, which is the net present value, of which I explained the merits and demerits. Of course, for those who missed, there are some notes that that will be sent um, to you. Then uh, accept the project when the PI of the ability index is actually uh, greater than uh, one. And then here when accounting rate of return is uh, greater than cost of capital. Okay, greater than the cost of capital. These are the the rules as we look at the project evaluation so the cost of capital now let us pick it up we are going to look at the the other one where we are really picking at now the account rate of return some of those those who missed these other ones the net present value calculation calculation of the payback period internal rate of return accounting rate of return we didn't do so we're going to start with the accounting rate of return. Okay, so we can get to an example to do with all these pro all these techniques that are used in capital budgeting. They are independent of each other, meaning that if you missed on net present value, the way it's calculated is calculated in, in its own way. The payback period is also calculated in, in its own way. The internal rate of return is also calculated in, in its own way. Each of these ones are calculated differently. All right, so let us look at an example, uh, getting down to calculating the accounting rate of return. I know we can get back to these are um, methods like payback period, net present value for those who missed. So let us look at accounting rate of return, okay? So this is the return that investors expect as a result of making an investment in the project and there is the the rule of acceptance like i mentioned accept the project when accounting rate of return is greater than the cost all right okay so now we are saying um account rate of return uses accounting profit now this accounting profit is calculated the normal way we are looking at the 
financial performance for the business, the way we calculate our profit for the year, looking at the income statement, we are getting the, the profit aspect. All right, so now, the account rate of return uses accounting profit or losses and not cash flows. The difference between accounting profits and cash flows is accounting profits and losses. So we have to look at the, the method of depreciation. This is a, the straight line method. So straight line method. We may be given in an exam, which is a depreciation equal to initial cost minus the salvage value or residual value divided by the, pro, the project life. Okay. Now, this is the way we go about uh, accounting rate of return. So it's, we are talking about average accounting profit over average investment. Average accounting profit, that's the formula here. This is a cardinal point as we look at accounting rate of return. It's good for shareholders because they all know that the, they are going to get their dividends, okay? For shareholders, you can only get a dividend which is the profit distributed to shareholders. So the accounting rate of return is good for shareholders because they will know that they will be able to get their dividend. All right, so the formula is average accounting profit, you divide by initial investment. So this is the formula for accounting rate of return, which is average accounting profit over average investment. All right, so meaning the formula comes here where you look at um, sum of profits and losses, then divide by the project life, okay? Then divide by initial cost plus salvage or divide by two. Okay, let's say average, this is the average um, investment. So this one gives us an average investment. All right, now this one is average accounting profit where we are saying the sum of profits and losses divided by project life. All right, to so find the, the average accounting profit. So the sum of profits and losses divided by project life, if the project has five years, Okay, the project has five years, you divide by five. Then average investment, you look at the initial cost of the investment where you invested in a building. Then plus the salvage value, which is the same as rigid value divided by two. All right, now let us get into, of course, we'll come back to this formula here. But right now we can look at what are the acceptance rules for accounting rate of return. So here we're saying the company target rate. So accept the project if accounting rate of return is greater than the cost. This is a, the acceptance um, of accounting rate of return. Now, advantages, it's easy to calculate. Now, needed information will usually be available. Then uh, it ignores cash flows, it's advantages. It ignores cash flows as they come. And then it doesn't consider time value of money. So here you simply say no consideration of time value of money. So no consideration of time value of money, which is not good enough because time value of money is cardinal uh, in our day-to-day -day activities. Okay, so no consideration of um of t t m v time value can even say time value of money it does not consider a time value of money which is not good enough all right so let us look at a question here so that you understand how you calculate the average accounting uh, rate of return a company has the following profits from a project over a five year period. So we have, this is for one, two, three, four, five. So meaning this is year one. Okay, so this is year one here. The second one, $1,500 is year two. Okay, so this is year two. Okay, then this is year one. Then this is year three. Okay, then this is year four. 
then this is a uh, file. Okay. So these are the profits that are there coming from uh, different years. Okay, so now we have these profits coming from different years. The initial investment is $20,000. That's the initial investment. So meaning that this is how much we pumped in uh, in the company. So in the company, we pumped in 20,000 in this investment, in this project, we invested $20,000 uh, in a project. Maybe it can be in a real estate, or in a, it may be in farming, maybe in transport business. Maybe uh, when you are, uh, keep, you are doing, you are running as yes, a kitchen run, okay? We have that amount that we invested in. That's a risk appetite, which is the amount that you are able to lose if you are to invest. Because you may get it back or it may go just like that. Now, the company's target rate is 19.19%, find the accounting rate of return. So, looking at the formula here, we have to find the average accounting profit. So, average accounting profit. These are the profits, so you find the average of these. So meaning that you, you sum up the profits, then divide by project life, which is five years in this case, because of a five year period. So we are getting uh, our average profit. You add all these divided by five. Five is the number of years that we have been given in the question. All right, so now we are now to do the average investment. So average investment is equal to initial cost, which is the, the $20,000, then plus the, the salvage value. This one is also called the residue value. So in other books, they would say salvage value, okay? Or residue, okay? Or residue value. You can also call it, um, it's also called the scrap value. So there are three terminologies that are there as we look at the, um, the salvage value. So it is a residual value or the scrap value or the salvage value. So it can be also called the scrap, all right? So now here, we, have, we haven't been given the, the, the salvage value or the scrap value is not there in this uh, uh, question. So you take it, it's a zero, all right? So you take it, it's a zero scrap value, salvage value. So that's why we're saying initial investment is $20,000. <coughs> then, <coughs> excuse me, then plus the salvage value, which is zero, then divide by two, which is giving us um 10,000. So meaning our accounting rate of return is average profit of 2,180 2, divided by 10,000, which is giving us um 21.8 when we divide 21.6 divided by 10,000, then multiplied by 100. So we're getting 21.8%. So this one is okay because our target was a 19% for the company's target account rate of return, but we have found 21.8. So it is worthwhile that we can accept this project because it's above our target value of 19%. Uh, All right. So the project is acceptable uh, since the accounting rate of return uh, is above the company's target of 19%. Uh, percent. All right. This is about. Sorry, sir. Yes, please. Sorry to take you back. Um, on average investment, um, we're dividing through by by two. Where is the two coming from? I don't. Know. I think I I might have missed that point. Okay. So where the two is coming from is because the we are looking at two things that are involved here when finding the average investment. So first and foremost, first you need to go for the initial cost. So initial cost of this project was 
$20,000, which is given in the question. But we were supposed also to be given the scrap value or the, or the salvage value, which was not given. So this, this is the one, two. These two initial cost and salvage value, that's where the two is coming from as we divide. Now, since the salvage value is not given, that's where this one is a zero. Then the initial cost is, is uh, 20,000. So these two, the addition of these two, the salvage value and the initial cost, these two, that's where the average of a two is coming from. Oh, so it's so in the formula, it's always divided by two. Correct, yes. So from the in the formula, like here, it's if you check on this one, the accounting rate of return is got the sum of profits and losses divided by project life, which will be which will be stated in the question. If the project life will be five years or four years or whatever number of years will be stated in the question. So you divide by uh, that number of years that will be given in the question. But for the, the denominator for the average investment is, is always the initial cost plus the salvage value, then you divide by two. So a two is a constant because there are only two things that we consider as we look at the average investment. All right, thank, thank you very much. All right, so now we we get to the, to the, okay. So we are now getting down to um, the actual formula. So now here we are saying the 21.8 is above the target. Uh, the company's target accounting rate is 19%. So what we have found actually is above our target. So we can go ahead and accept this project. Otherwise, if we found anything less than 19% target for the company, would have actually rejected the project, meaning that we wouldn't have gone uh, further to invest in this uh, project. So this is about the accounting rate of return. All right, so we can now move an extra mile where we now look at the, uh, a question, different question altogether. So this question, we can look at this other question, um, question one. Okay, this question is in one of the exam papers. We guess we can look at now. Let's look at this example here, where it says, um, uh, EPIC, okay, <clears throat> POC is considering, <clears throat> excuse me, considering uh, marketing a new product, okay. Um, with a four year uh, life. So meaning that our N here is equal to four. Okay, so meaning our N is four years. All right. And then we are now saying, if we will need to install new equipment to manufacture a product, the picker has to choose between two machines, uh, both of which would be suitable. All right, machine one uh, costs 460,000 to purchase and install, meaning that this is an initial investment uh, in this machine. We have two machines that you need uh, to invest in. Can you go and invest in machine one or can you go and invest in machine two, depending on what we have. So machine one costs 460,000 to purchase and install. Uh, we have a residual value which is a scrap value of 20,000 at the end of the four years, all right? Machine two cost is 630,000 to purchase and install and as a residual value of 30,000 at the end of four years, all right? Now, machine two takes slightly longer to install and commission, but once in operation, it has slightly lower operating costs uh, per unit and will eventually produce more output. The following projections have been prepared of the cash flows uh, from project uh, product sales and operating costs for the two machines. All right. So now we have a machine one, we have the sales and the costs. Okay, then the company's cost of capital is at 12% per annum. All capital investments have to achieve a payback period of 
um, three years or less. All right, so that is what we have. But of course, the investment for this machine is 460,000. So this is how much outlay or how much we are making as an investment in this uh, uh, project. All right. So we say this is how much we are able to lose because as you make an investment, you're not sure about the recovery or if you are going to get back your, your money. Okay, so this other one is 630,000. This is on machine two. Okay, so now um, let us look at the project viability. Is it worthwhile for us to go ahead and make an investment in this in this project or in which machine can we invest in? All right, so now using the NPV method and paying attention to the condition uh, set on the payback, do the calculations to show which product should be accepted and advise the management. All right, so this is about this question, 20 marks. All right, so now what is going to happen here is that we need to find the net cash flows because we have the sales for machine one and then the costs for machine one we also have. So we are supposed to find the net cash flows from uh, or given or for each year, or net cash flows for each year, we need to actually find for both machines one and two. Okay, so this is it, our requirement. So among the, the techniques, NPV is a very, very important technique. And it's a technique that examiners would ask in most cases, it doesn't miss in an exam. So you just need to understand it thoroughly. All right, so now we, we can go and uh, check out here, machine one. Okay, so we go to machine one. Okay, we can see that machine one, the sales are these ones. Okay, so the sales are these ones here. Okay, so we have 1,340,000. The sales for, of course, the investment was in negative because this is how much you are able to lose uh if we are to invest in that given project all right so we have the cash flows for year one it is the one eighty thousand okay so one eighty thousand is how much we have as the net cash flows all right so we have one eighty thousand as the cash flows for um, year number one. Okay. Year two, we also have the cash flow, okay, of uh, what we have here. So year two, we have a cash flow of 200,000 because we are subtracting 1,340,000 minus 1,160,000. When we go back to the, the problem here, these are we are best. So we have these ones. So this is one million three hundred thousand. So you're subtracting here, this one and that one, this one and that one, to get the the net cash flows for each year. So we, for your one, subtract that one. Is the sales minus the costs so that you find uh, net cash flows for each year. Of course, the investment was. For 60,000 for machine one. Similarly, for machine two, we subtract that one and that one. Each of these ones, we are subtracting. This is where the, uh, the figures are coming from. Okay. So we have that one where we are getting each of these. We are saying, so the net cash flow is yes, zero. We have 460,000, which is a negative. This is how much money. We are able to lose, okay? Then um, we have the other one, okay? So meaning here, these are the four cash flows that we have. The net cash flows are these ones here, okay? These are the net cash flows 
Of course, there's no need for cumulative. It doesn't matter. The examiner may not ask about it. Just that is for additional purposes, but it's not supposed to even to be there. But it's just the we can add this plus that one to get the next one. This one plus this one, we get negative eight. This one plus that one, we get the other one. Just about that. But this was not even actually necessary to get the cumulative cash flows. Of course, this is what is important: the sales minus costs, and we are getting the net cash flows. Now we discount these at rate of uh, twelve percent, which has been given in the question. So the twelve percent is given in the question. We can just look at it. The twelve percent per annum has been given. So the the the, the, the figure to use the, for the present value is one plus r to the power negative n. So this is about what to use, one plus r to the power negative n. Our rate is 12%, so we can find for year one. Okay, for the first year, year zero, it's one. Of course, the number of decimal places doesn't matter. You can go for even three decimal places or, or four decimal places. The examiner can still understand that for as long as the, the concept is clear. So for the other one, we're getting 0 0.9. Eight nine, so we multiply this one by the one eighty thousand. So we can multiply one eighty thousand by zero point eight nine. We are getting one sixty two hundred. Of course, it could have been because maybe they changed these to four decimal places for this one to be one sixty seven fourteen. All right. So this is what happens. So the zero point eight nine by one eighty thousand. We are getting this one. Of course, maybe may, be, may, have, may just be, would have been rounded off. Then the other one is uh, 200,000. So we multiply the 200,000, then multiply by 0 0.8. Okay, because this one, the second one is uh, 1 plus r to the power negative 2 for the other one. So meaning to be 1.12 to the power negative 2. Okay, so it's 0 0.79 something. So this is how we are getting these figures here to get the, the, the present values. Yeah, these ones are coming from the multiplication of uh, these ones, multiplied by that one to get the other one. This one multiplied by that one to get that one. This one multiplied by that one to get that one. Similarly, this one multiplied by that to get that one. And then this you, the total of all these ones here, minus the initial investment, which is a 460,000, we are getting the net present value of 24,879. Accept the project if NPV is actually greater than zero. Otherwise, reject the project, all right? Otherwise, reject the project. If the NPV is less than zero, you reject the project because meaning the product viability is questioned because you, you shouldn't lose out. As you make an investment in a building, you should actually get your return because it, it, it shouldn't be meaningless for an investor, for anyone else. This is the reason why we're doing this corporate finance capital budgeting in, in particular, very cardinal topic so that you evaluate projects, you can venture into business so it, you, you should pay off as you are making an investment in, a, in your business. It should give you a return. So the NPV should not be anything less than zero, meaning you are on the losing side. Whatever you should recover should be more than how much you invested in the given project. So this is machine one. This is how you have gotten the NPV here because the question requires that we actually look at evaluate the machines here based on the net present value. All right, so we have already done machine one. So we can get down a little bit now to machine two. So here to find the present values for each of these years, uh, uh, the net cash flows, we subtract the, the sales minus uh, the cost of sales so that we get the value for the net cash flows for each uh, of these years that we have, year one through to year four. All right, so in machine two, we are also saying 
these are the sales, okay? So the sales are these ones. Then uh, minus the cost of the cost of sales, okay? We are these ones. So these are the 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 cost. Then we can get the net cash flows. So this is net, okay? So you're getting net uh, cash flows. We are getting down to this one. So for these ones here, we can see that, um, okay, we have the, 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 the we have considering the residue value. Residue value, the reason why you're considering it is that for machine one, especially, if we get down to machine one, there was a scrap value of uh, 20,000 at the end of the four years. So this scrap value, you should also just account for it because this is the, the amount at which you can sell this machine after it has been in use for a number of years. Okay, so it has been has been in use for a number of years from year one through to uh, year four. Okay, so this residue value, that's why it was considered as we look at the, this 20,000, we also multiplied by the discount factor using this formula here, cost of capital was 12%. So we multiplied by 0 0.64 to get the present values here. All right. So this is about what this one is all about. So getting down to machine two, we have uh, the sales minus the costs. So we are getting, um, are there questions so far? Are there some questions so far? All right then, if there are no questions, let me proceed. So we look at the sales minus cost. So we are getting that one, the 90 as a net cash flow. You multiply by, we are still using the one plus R to the power negative N, the power negative N, which is our rate is is 12 percent in the in the in the question. So we have the 12 percent there. In substituting that, we're getting these discount factors using just this one. N is the number of years, where N is the number of, is representing years. Okay. So if it's one year, you put the value there for each of those years. So if it's one year, you put one there, but it will be, in short, it will be 1.12 to the power negative N because the N, the rate was 12%. So you can calculate uh, each of these ones using the, the discount factor. So here you're multiplying this one by that one to get the figure there. The 300,000 by this one to get the figure at the far end. The 360,000 by that to get the other one there. Then the other one here, which is 150,000 by, by 0 0.64, we get that figure there. 30,000 by that, we get 19,066. So this is about, now we are getting the present values. So our NPV will be the sum of all these, okay? Then minus the initial investment in the project, of 630,000, then we are getting skiste 149. All right, so our conclusion is that we should invest in machine two because it has a higher NPV compared to machine number one. So here, conclusion, okay, will be, okay, so our conclusion here is that we uh, invest Okay, in machine one, that is invest in machine two. So here we're going to say invest in machine two. So invest in machine two. Okay, so invest in machine, machine two with high NPV. Okay, invest in machine two with higher 
NPV. All right, so I NPV than that of machine one. I NPV than machine one. Okay, so than machine one. So this is it, the conclusion based on it, this question. Unless if there are any other questions that say people would ask concerning these two machines. All right, so we have looked at NPV for machine one is 24829. This one is Kiste 149. So we are to invest in machine two with NPV. So you select a machine that will give you the highest possible uh, net present value. All right, so this is on this project evaluation technique in terms of the net present value. All right, unless there are any questions concerning this uh, question we've looked at so far, Yes, I have a question. Yes. Okay, uh, I've got two questions. The first one is, um, I want to know how the we how the we're calculating the cumulative uh, cash flow. Oh. And the other question, the other question is, uh, I, maybe I missed it because of uh, network challenges where you were explaining about uh, the residue a value of 20,000 in this uh, uh, question. Is that, a, is that so? Yes. Okay. Okay, so uh, we can start answering uh, any question. We can start either with question one or two that you've answered, you have asked. Okay, so the residue value simply means it, that's a value at which you can sell the machine. When you have gotten your machine, Machine one was bought at 460,000 kwacha. You install it, you put it, uh, you purchase and install it at home. Then you know after four years, you can only sell it at uh, 20,000. That's what it means by a residue value, which is a scrap value. So meaning you that 20,000 will be your, your benefit from the amount that you bought that item. So besides it, how much money that machine will be giving you if it's uh, the printer or any machine, okay? In the year one, it is able to generate the net cash flow of the difference between the sales and the cost. Of course, that will be your benefit. And then year two also, you will be able to get uh, to, like here, we have the benefit for machine one of the sales, which is 1,340,000. And then minus the cost, we are getting the net cash flows. So these ones are net. Okay, so this is the net cash flow. Then uh, you have up to year four, but of course you are, you also have the residual value for year four of this twenty thousand. So you don't have to let it go; it's your money. But all you need to do, you need to find the present value of it using the discount factor or at year four, which is zero point six four. Of course, you need to calculate this when finding the present value factor, which is the P, uh, V, so present value factor, using the, the formula, which is this one, or you can even use the financial tables. All right, so this is about how you get using one plus one. So R is the 12% in this case. So this is how the discount factors we are, we are obtained. So multiplying the net cash flows by the discount factors, we are getting the last column for the present values. So this 20,000, we have accounted for it because we cannot throw this money. This money is our benefit because we still have it, meaning that after you have used that machine or your vehicle for four years, but you can still, even if you acquired it at 460,000, but you can still sell it at a 20,000. Excuse me, is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you can, you can, you can, you, <clears throat> you are accounting for a twenty thousand. That's your money. But you need to just find the present value of it, which is the, by multiplying by the discount factor, you get the present value. At the, looking at the last column there. 
All right, so that I've, I think I've explained the 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 the, the, the scrap value. This this um residue value is also called the scrap value or salvage value. So this one has three terms: residue or scrap value, all right, or salvage value. The three terminologies. All right, so now we have this. I've gotten it. So meaning, as we go, I'm going to explain to you the cumulative cash flows that you ask, but same as machine two, you also uh, need to do the same. The salvage value was 30,000, which we should account for, that you don't have to let go of it, because it's part of uh, your return that you should consider. All right, so you multiply by each of these to get to present values and get an NPV. And so here we're accepting the project with the higher NPV, which is machine two. Now, getting the cumulative cash flows, we are simply uh, saying the first one is negative 40,000 because it's negative. The reason is that that money is you are able to lose. You are likely to lose. That's why it's a minus. A plus means what is coming to you. A minus is something that is going away from you. So negative 40,000 then you 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 start accumulating. Cumulative simply means adding these. So the first thousand, then plus one eighty thousand. All right, it's giving us negative two eighty thousand. So this is where this one is coming from. So a cumulative, you get negative four sixty thousand plus the actual cash flow that has come. All right, which is the one eighty thousand. The minus, which is one million three forty thousand minus uh, one million six one sixty thousand. One sixty thousand. One million one sixty thousand. You're getting one eighty thousand. So we're adding these. So negative two eighty thousand plus two hundred thousand. You're getting negative eighty thousand. Negative eighty thousand plus one sixty thousand. I'm sure you're getting it. Not so. Is that clear? Yes, yes. So this is how you're getting these. So this minus because it went away. Plus what came in, we are getting negative two eighty thousand. This one plus what came in, we're getting this one. This one plus what came in, we're getting. And then just like about that, but it, we don't. This is just for the sake of presentation. But we, the examiner, may not even consider it that much. What is interested in is to find the present value. So you use the net cash flows, you multiply by the discount factor, and then you get the present value. So for both of uh, these machines, this is how it was done. So even here, it's negative six thirty thousand plus ninety thousand, negative five forty. Plus three hundred thousand negative two forty plus three sixty thousand it will give, gives us a positive one twenty just about that is that clear yes all right then so I've explained this question so we just have time to go through it and let's uh, sir question. yes sir which figures are you multiplying to get the the present values is it the cash flows or the cumulative cash flows we are getting the net cash flow just the net cash flow the cash flows not the cumulative we don't use the cumulative oh, cumulative, oh. cumulative was just the aspect of presentation but but don't use it we use the, the net cash flows to multiply by the discount factor to get the present values please all right okay. so yeah so we end the class for now. So the other class that we're going to have, I think Mr. Collins is going to actually advise on the time that we are going to have another class. Okay, so I'll uh, kindly requesting for the video because we some of us missed uh, the, the afternoon class. Okay, that one I think it, it will be easy to be shared. No problem, no worries about that to be shared. If there are any other questions, we we'll still have to have another class so that I, for those who missed it, you can still run through so that you can understand this topic thoroughly, so that the, at least you, are, you get ready for your tests and exams. You can end the class for now.